Hi there, Aaron Engler, the Debt Professor. Today's video is about a bizarre credit card loophole that basically makes it so that credit card companies can charge the average American citizen illegal interest rates. So, um, what is the average legal interest rate in the United States? It's right around 10.35% for most states. Uh, it varies from state to state, and actually it, is, it does go by state law. Some states have higher interest rates than others that are allowed. Um, most Americans are paying more than what, they, what their state says they should legally be allowed to, and this video is about why that is. Uh, the answer to that basically lies in a 1978 Supreme Court decision. There was a guy named Fred Fisher who was living in Iowa, and he got a $500 loan from First National Bank of Omaha. So Fred was living in Iowa and he got a loan from a bank in Nebraska. It was for $500 and Fred was making his minimum payments. He found out later on that he was paying twice the interest rate that Iowa state law said that he was supposed to be paying. Um, at the time, Iowa state had a law that said that the legal rate of interest was 9%. Fred was paying closer to 18% because at the time, Nebraska state law said that that's what was allowed to be charged in the state of Nebraska. But Fred didn't live in Nebraska. He lived in Iowa. And so Fred says to the bank in Nebraska, first, you know, first Bank of Omaha, says, I'm not going to pay you. Uh, you're charging me an illegal interest rate for my state. And the case actually took seven years for Fred to fight, and it didn't get decided until 1978. So he actually started fighting this in 1971. And he goes through, and, and you know, on December 18, 1978, seven years later, the Supreme Court tells Fred that he has to pay the loan that he got from the bank in Nebraska. So what happened there is the Supreme Court set a precedent and basically most laws that come after that, if there's ever a, a battle over interest rates again, they're going to look at that case and they're going to say, well, we found back in 1978 that it goes to the, the state where the creditor is located. That's the interest rate that we can go off of. So guess what happens? Well, banks see this decision and they say, well, we can use this. We can go and incorporate and move into states that do not have usury laws. And today, those states are New Hampshire, Delaware, Virginia, South Dakota, Utah, and Nevada has very lenient laws, as well as Arizona. So the banks incorporated in those states, and now they have the right to charge whatever interest rates they want to any U.S. citizen. It doesn't matter what state they live in, because of that Supreme Court decision, they, it doesn't, you know, they're in a state that lets them charge whatever they want. Even though there's only seven states out there like that, they can charge that to anybody in the country. So banks now literally have a license to steal from you no matter what state you live in. Even if you do live in one of those states, well, you know, if you, were, if you live in New Hampshire, Delaware, Virginia, South Dakota, Nevada, Utah, or Arizona, then you're going to be paying those rates anyway. But now, because of that 1978 Supreme Court decision, everybody is at risk for that. So the banks can now literally charge people interest rates that are illegal in their home state and they can charge it to them legally. So they basically have a license to steal. And if you look below this video, you'll see a list of, um, actually if you're on the Debt Professor website, you will see a list below this video of what the actual um, current uh, illegal interest rates are for most states and it's current as of the day that I made the video which is um, the 12th of December 2008 so uh, pretty sneaky but that's what gives banks the ability to steal from you um, now can you beat them at their own game yes there's ways to get out of debt if you don't carry a credit card then they can't beat you with it uh, but most people have credit cards and they need to figure out how to get out of the credit card debt if you need help with that, go to freedebtexam.com. It's a website that I created, and it'll ask you a series of yes or no questions, anywhere between five to eight questions. And based on how you answer those questions, answer them honestly, and it'll tell you what route is probably best for you to get out of debt. Um, again, I'm Aaron Engler, the debt professor. If you are tired of being in debt, I can help you. Most people think, you know, I have to make more money in order to get out of debt. Well. That is not true. You need to better leverage the money that you have in order to get out of debt, and I can teach you how to do that. If you are looking for help, 
take the free debt exam at freedebtexam.com, and there's there should be a link to this. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's in the, the About Me section. There's a link to free debt exam. If you're watching this on Debt Professor, it should be right underneath the video. And when you take the free debt exam, you will get a my five-step guide to getting out of debt the right way um, at no charge today. So take a look at that, and if you are looking for help, by all means, I hope you learned something here, and I hope you, you take the actions that you need to, to to finally get out of credit card debt. It is a losing battle no matter which way you look at it. So Aaron Engler, The Debt Professor, I hope you found this informative, and if you're looking for help, you can always reach me at debtprofessor.com. Thanks.